So I think let's go ahead and get this thing going. A couple people joining in late here. All right. All right, for everyone who's just joining us, my name is Thomas and I'm with HIMSS. And this is the webinar for the new BrailleSense 6 firmware release uh, that has just come out recently for folks here in the United States. If you're from somebody or somewhere else, um, you may or may not have yours out, but here in the US, uh, we've just released it. Um, so if you're still waiting on yours, you're gonna get a sneak preview of what's coming up. Uh, so as before, uh, my name is Thomas. I'm joined here with Earl Harrison. And Earl and I are going to be doing uh, covering some of these new applications that are covered in the BrailleSense, uh, BrailleSense 6 firmware. There's going to be one hour of presentation followed by one hour of Q&A. So um, that, the agenda that we're going to go into, we're going to first start off with an introduction to the BrailleSense 6. Um, next, we're going to talk about the new Bible app. We're going to be discussing the wiki search app. We also have a document reader, a podcast, and we're also going to be talking about deafblind communication. All right, so uh, first and first up, let's talk about an intro to the Braille Sense 6. So uh, I assume that most of you are aware of the Braille Sense 6, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this quick and succinct. If you don't have a Braille Sense 6, um, this introduction is for you. But of course, there's going to be a lot more to learn. So uh, when somebody asks me about the Braille Sense 6, there's a few things that I tell them. If you're coming from the Polaris, the, the quick answer about why the Braille Sense 6 is better, um, it's smaller, lighter, faster, it's just better. Um, some of the things that make it better, uh, it is uh, first and foremost, is the 32 cell uh, Perkins keyboard note taker. Um, we've gone to Android 10 for the operating system. And what that means is that you're not going to have obsolescence uh, like you are with some of the note takers with the older operating system. Inside of it, we have an eight core CPU. We also have six gigabytes of RAM and we have 128 gigabytes of storage. So we've really upped the internals of the RailSense 6 compared to the Polaris. And to be honest with you, the CPU, the RAM, the internal storage, it simply cannot be beat uh, with any other uh, no ticker that's out there. So some of the things that make the Braille Sense 6 interesting, um, we have changed the ports, and usually ports aren't that exciting, um, but we have two USB Type-A ports. So that's going to be for your typical thumb drive, your you know typical USB Type-A. And then we have two USB Type-C ports, and those are going to be symmetrical. One of the great things about USB Type-C um, is it has some awesome capabilities that you're not going to get elsewhere. So, for example, uh, one of the USB Type-C ports is labeled with the letter V for video. Um, so if you wanted to share something with a sighted colleague, you can use a single cable to connect it to a monitor uh, or anything else like that. Um, the other one is labeled P for PC. Um, so that's going to be where you're going to connect it to your computer, use a device in terminal mode. The device will actually also show up uh, as a drive on your computer as well. So you're going to be able to transfer files back and forth pretty easily. All right. A couple other things of note. Um, this thing is using Bluetooth 5.1. If any of you have used Bluetooth 5.1 before, you can attest that it is far superior here compared to any other Bluetooth uh, standard that was out there. It's much faster, the connection is much more stable, and you're gonna have a much greater range. So if you're gonna be using a device, a Braille device with, uh, let's say an iPhone, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna be using Bluetooth 5.1. It's gonna be fast, snappy. You're really gonna enjoy it. That initial connection is incredibly snappy. Of course, we have Wi-Fi on here. We've got 2.4 and five gigahertz bands. Um, and we go all the way up to, I believe, AC. So we do not have Wi-Fi 6 on there yet, uh, but we do have 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands and all the way up to AC. It comes with a, a 4,590 milliamp user replaceable battery. Um, one of the great things about this battery is that it does uh, have fast charge. So it does charge up very fast and it is a very long lasting battery. 
We also include two stereo speakers. We have a 13 megapixel rear camera. Um, and we do support external USB cameras. We also uh, support external USB microphones, keyboards. Um, and that's one of the really big pluses with the Braille Sense 6 is it provides you a lot of extensibility with just off the shelf USB peripherals. So some of the apps that are included, uh, you've got your file manager, your word processor, email, uh, we have a media player, database manager, Google search, Google Drive, macro managers, so on. So this is a full functioning note taker with uh, a full plethora of Braille first applications that we've built specifically for this note taker. This isn't some third party off the shelf applications. These are applications built uh, specifically for Perkins use. Um, in terms of size, uh, it is smaller, it is lighter. Um, it weighs only 1.55 pounds uh, without the case. And then the uh, dimensions of it, it is 9.64 inches wide, 5.66 inches deep, and 0 0.86 inches tall. So uh, Earl, is there anything that you think I missed here with that quick intro to the Braille Sense 6? No, I think you got it. All right. Excellent. So as we discussed uh, as part of the agenda, um, we did the quick intro of the Braille Sense 6. Up next, we're going to talk about the Sense Bible app. So Earl, sure, that's me, right? That's my that cue. That's your <laughs> cue. Oh, the only thing I would say, actually, did you mention the SD card? You know, the ability to oh. expand the SDs, cards. You know, you know what? I did not. It does include an SD card and it is a full sized SD card. So it's not a, a micro or mini SD card. Um, mm -hmm. It is a full size SD card. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, great job. The only other couple of things I would mention, uh, you've got the stereo headphone jacks, um, uh, as you've, you've always had on the Real Sense products, as well as a stereo microphone jack. Um, yeah. There are there are actually stereo microphones on the front of the device and stereo speakers on the back. We're all about stereo, I guess, uh, which is a great thing because uh, the microphones are actually really good quality. And if you're a podcaster, for example, you can like set it with one mic closer to the guest that you might be interviewing and one mic closer to yourself and have some really nice, you know, some real nice stereo imagery that way. So I'm going to move on to the, uh, the Bible app. Now, the Bible app is an optional application uh, developed by Hymns, right, uh, Thomas? I, I believe it is. Yeah, one that, of our own. <laughs> that's correct. Yep. Back due to popular demand, um, because it it kind of came from the BrailleSense U2 days, and um, then it worked its way into the BrailleSense Polaris. It's only until recently that we included it in the Braille Sense 6 because the Polaris uh, update came out before the Braille Sense 6 updated. So you guys for the Polaris got it first. But I'm happy to say it, it is on uh, the Braille Sense 6 now. And for me to be talking about the Bible um, without being at risk for, for proselytization, pro, what's that word, proselytizing? Um, you know, as, as a person of faith myself, I really appreciate it. I can also uh, understand that we need to respect uh, those folks who don't share, uh, you know, who aren't Christians. And um, so we make it an optional application that you can download. So whether you're downloading it for uh, theological reasons, personal spiritual reasons, or academic reasons, it's a great resource. And uh, I'll show you a little bit about how it works. But before we show you how it works, let me go ahead and share my screen with you here. Um, let's see. Oh, it went away, Thomas. Hang on just a second here. Figures, right? All right. I'll get it going here. Just give me a second. Of course, it went away. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be a presentation Why without something that? going wrong. Of course. So we'll, we'll get this going now. Um, understanding the vast majority of people watching here probably can't even see the screen, but that's okay. We're going to get it. Um, okay. I'm being... 
Geológicos. So while we're waiting, um, okay. I could go ahead and, uh, while you're working that out, I could go ahead and share my screen. We could switch up the agenda a little bit. I don't think people would be a little bit upset about that. Actually, I, I'm almost there, Thomas. So oh, okay. Give me, give me a moment here. All right. Share screen. Here it is. Boom. All right, we're is good he, to go. Yep. All right, all right, cool. It was there right before I came on. It really was. But so the first thing I'm gonna do Final is I'm back to my main menu. And from anywhere, we've actually included in this latest version a keystroke that you can use, um, and it's actually assignable to either your Google search or uh, the Wiki search or Wikipedia, and that is the Control Alt and W. By default, it is search set for Bible, uh, the Bible, or rather the the, <laughs> the Google search, rather. And I I see search and I see Bible real sense because I was practicing this before I came on here. So uh, it's already it's already uh, filled out from before. So I'm just going to go ahead and press enter here. BrailleSense six user downloads. Clips incorporated. One fifty seven list item. Okay, and I see BrailleSense six user download. I've got uh, these are my results in Google. So um, starting web browser. Gone are the days of having to. Yes. Uh, Com, resources, user Being at the mercy okay. of like advertising banners and scrolling uh, marquees and things like Real that. User downloads. So I've, I've got the page. I believe this is the page uh, where I can navigate by heading here. Real sense six user downloads heading one. And I'm in the Braille sense six user downloads. All I did was look for Bible Braille sense. Sense Bible app heading one. And I see sense Bible app. There are several files for the sense. And I'm just going to read down a, a line at a time here. Bible application including the sense. Bible user manual dot docs and two zip files. Please refer to the user manual manual for right. link instructions. So let's just go ahead and tab one time. Download link. And what do we have above that? Docs. Braille sense Bible user manual. So there's the Braille sense user manual. Um, and I'm going to go docs. ahead and get that, but download link. Let's see what else we got here. 9.61 megabytes. Sense Bible app download. So we've got three things we can download on this page. We've got the, the documentation, we've got the sense Bible, download and we've link. got the sense Bible app data. Um, the data so you need all three of those well, of course the the documentation 6.0 how download. to do everything including the installation and um the data that that populates the bible app and of course the bible app itself 9 so mega download link. i'm going to go ahead Docs. Real sense bible user and this is a document a docx file Docs. download link and i'm just going to go ahead and download that file download dialog real sense 20 bible 20 user 20 manual dot doc set box and confirm button confirm downloading file download dialog successfully downloaded real sense bible user manual doc docs 19. okay so we successfully downloaded the, the documentation so i can go out and read all about what you can do with the real sense uh, bible file manager and all that back to my main menu i press f1 and now i'm going to go ahead and find under the programs menu if i down arrow through here word processor and when i say down arrow i mean space with dot four on the braille keyboard or i can press r which is associated shortcut key to open the programs folder and of course it's r because p would get us into the play store so we took the next available letter which is o media r and i've, I've gone into the uh, programs folder where it lives after you install the sense bible, sense bible b. and i'll just go ahead and I'll down arrow to that, and I press enter on it. King James Version K15 list items. And I see I've got five versions of the Bible. Um, New King James Version and two five list items. King James items. Version, the New King James Version. New International Version. The New I, International five, Version. New Living Translation. 
new living translation new revised standard version R five five list revised standard version. Okay, so let's say that new international version. I want to go into new international version. I'll press enter on that. New international version books list dialogue. Title, Genesis 166 list item. And here I've got all 66 uh, books of the, the New International Version, uh, NIV version of the Bible. Let's say that I want to go to um, one of them. Uh, we can navigate this list. Most, most things on the Braille Sense are navigable by first letter. Let's say I want to go to Psalms. Psalms 1966 list item. Bet you didn't know, some of you, that Psalms begins with a P. <laughs> and uh, so it's uh, the, the abbreviation for Psalms is going to be PSA, uh, even though it says it right here on the screen. You know, whenever you go to look up something in a particular book, you would use the three first letters of that that book name. I'll press enter on Psalms. Book name, chapter, and verse. Psalm one, one edit box. It says book name, chapter, and verse. Of course, we get into the um, we get into the you know I see PSA on the Braille display. Um, one colon one. And I'm just going to go ahead and route my cursor to uh, just to the right of the number, the first number one. One. Delete it and type in two, two three, three. And press enter. 23. One a song of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Okay. So there is a uh, very apropos. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. 23. Two. He makes me lie down in. You know, and we go from, we can go from chapter to chapter. Um, book to book, and I say it's apropos because I and let people know that today is the first anniversary of the day I was admitted to the hospital last year with COVID nineteen. So this is actually uh, one of the <laughs> one of the uh, passages that uh, went through my head quite frequently during that ten week stint in the hospital. Uh, if I if I want to move uh, by chapter twenty three. He restores my soul. He guides me and has a righteousness for his name's sake. Or rather, I'm moving by verse right now. So I can actually move by chapter, verse, book. If I want to go to a different book in the Bible, um, I can actually cycle between them. 23, he restores let's, my soul. He. So let's see if the, see if the uh, phraseology changes a little bit when I press the tab key. 23, he renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. So you remember the order that those Bibles were in when we first got into it, the King James, New King James Version. I'm actually cycling between 23, he restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Those different versions. 23, he restores my soul. He led me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 23, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 23, he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And if I want to go to a particular, uh, an, another book within this Bible, I want to see what version I'm on. New International Version Books List Dialogue. I hear Title, that I am back list. in the new international version because I, I pressed that tab key five times to cycle between all the different uh, versions of the Bible. And I can go to a different passage uh, just as uh, fast or if, if not faster as my fellow worshipers. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Exodus 266 list item. Let's say I want to go to John. Joshua 666 list item. The book of John. Judges, Jeremiah 246, Joe 2966, Jonah 3260. John 43, 66 list item. Yeah, okay, I'm going to press enter on that. Book name, chapter and verse, Joe 23, three edit box. And now I'm actually on, it says Joe 23. Interesting, I'm going to run my curse, uh, cursor, J-O-H-2-3, uh, colon 3. So it brought me to the, the, the book of John in verse 23. And let's just say that I want to go to uh, the first... Chapter three, two, one. Uh, let's say that I want to go to the 14th three. verse. One, four, one, 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, what's really fun about this is that I can actually um, pick the beginning of this. And this, I've got uh, a friend now in seminary who is really loving the ability to. Um, copy information from the different Bibles and have them automatically annotated when you paste them into a document. So I'm going to go ahead and begin my block. Start selection. And I'm just going to go ahead and navigate down. Here a Lord, 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 truth. One, he who has surpassed me. One, 16. I've all received one, one, 17 for the law was given through. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, Moses, grace and truth find through. a good place to Jesus Christ. Here. One, 18. No one has ever seen God, but. 
God, the one and only who is at the Father's side, has made him known. All right. So that, that seems like a good place to route my cursor to the end of that sentence. I'll copy it. Copy complete. I'm one, just going to use my ever seen God, but by the one and only, who is global the side, keystroke to get into my notepad that I know it happens to be F1 with the letter N. Task name, notepad. I'm already back Top at the top of my notepad, and I can just paste that Copy text to international. in there. It's annotated at the top that it's a new international Bible. Brian, Joe 1, 14, 1, 14 is dwelling among us. We have and seen this. Now I've got this information in here. If I want to compare uh, with the different Bible versions, and see if it, you know, the interpretation seems maybe a little bit different or, or something like that. I can just kind of combine a whole bunch of stuff. And if I'm in a Bible study, I can also, uh, you know, go in and those, those passages that really resonate with me, I can just kind of paste them into a notepad doctor for my future reflection. So that is a little bit about the new Bible app. I love it. Thank you very much, Earl, for that. Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, um, we're going to be doing one hour presentation and then we're going to be doing Q&A uh, after the fact. So I noticed that there's a couple of people typing in the chats uh, and we'll get to those uh, at the end of the presentation section. So uh, go ahead and type them in there. That's fine. But just know that we're going to get to them a little bit later on. All right. So up next, uh, it is my turn to do the wiki app. So let's go ahead and switch over to me here. All right. So um, I have my Braille Sense 6 right here. File manager F. Does that sound okay, Earl? Sounds great. All right. So before I jump into the wiki app, um, I kind of want to explain a little bit about it first. Um, so first and foremost, the wiki app, it is a Braille first application um, that's going to let you search Wikipedia and Wiktionary. So um, Earl, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Bible app that you just uh, demonstrated, the wiki app that I'm about to demonstrate, and all of the other ones that we're talking about today, these were developed by HIMSS uh, Braille first, right? Exactly. Yep. Exactly. That's right. So you, that means you've got your keyboard commands. Like, obviously, we can't show everything uh, in this limited amount of time. But these apps were developed uh, not as third-party apps that you're going to download on Google Play Store. This is Braille first. So it's made to be easy to use, but powerful. Okay, So the Wiki Search app, it's a Braille first application that allows you to search both Wikipedia and Wiktionary. Um, so... I think most people know what Wikipedia is. So it's kind of like an open source encyclopedia where you can get a lot of information about a whole host of different things. Um, I believe it is the most widely referenced, uh, re <laughs> widely referenced uh, website in the world uh, for research purposes, which is completely against everything I remember. Um, and so that was Wikipedia. Wiktionary, on the other hand, I had to search, search it up to see what it was. Wiktionary is just like Wikipedia. Uh, so it's free, it's open sourced, uh, but the content is that that's typically found in a dictionary. So you're going to have like definitions, pronunciations, and quite a bit more. So to go to the Wikipedia app, uh, I'm here on the, uh, the main page. Uh, the Wiki app is under Web Tools. So I could press the letter B to get to web tools. Web browser, B. Now I'm in the web tools uh, folder, puts me in web browser, that's at the top. Wiki search is at the bottom, so I could jump to bottom or I could just hit W. Reference, Wikipedia one, two combo box. So I pressed B to get into web tools, W to open this up. Alternatively, I could have pressed F2 and W, I believe it's global hockey. So when I first open up the app, there's gonna be a section that says reference. So right now mine says reference Wikipedia one slash two CB combo box. Um, because it's a combo box, that means that I should be able to change it. I'm just gonna go ahead and press space. Wiktionary two two combo box. And I changed it from Wikipedia to Wiktionary. So um, for this demonstration, I'm gonna just go ahead and search up uh, a definition, okay? So I've pressed space to change it to Wiktionary. Uh, I could press F3 or I could press space with dots four, five, does the same thing to move down to the search term. Search term at a box. All right. 
So in the search term, um, it's an edit box. So I should be able to just type in uh, whatever search term I want to search. Uh, today's word of the day, according to Merriam-Webster dictionary, is amity. So let's go ahead and type that. A M five six Y. All right. So I've got amity as the search term. And then from here, if I press F3, it's going to take me down to some additional things. Um, but I really don't want those. I just want to know what Amity means. So I type in the search term and I'm going to press enter. Searching. Title, Amity 110 list item. All right. So after typing Amity, uh, I press enter and it says Amity 1 slash 10 list item. So what that means is that there are 10 search results uh, that come back for the word Amity. Um, and by default, it's always going to start off in English uh, and it's always going to show you 10 search results. Uh, having gone through this before, I know that the, the first result is the one that I want. So there's a few things I could do. I could press F3 and that's going to take me down to the uh, content. Searching. Section 110, English, multi-line edit box. All right. One of the nice things is that it's broken up in a section. So I can move through the different sections here. I could press uh, F3. Section 210, etymology, multi-line edit box. I don't want to know the etymology. I'll press F3 again. Section 310, pronunciation, multi-line edit box. That's not of interest. I'll press F3 again. Section 410, noun, multi-line edit box. Okay, so it's a noun. This is the part that's getting me curious. So from here, I'm going to just go ahead and use my scroll keys. New paragraph, new paragraph, friendship, the cooperative and supportive relationship between people or animals. In this sense, the term connotes a relationship which involves mutual knowledge. All right. So I found that it was noun and then it's providing me with some additional information. Um, if I keep pressing F3, it's going to continue to take me through the different sections. Section, section 610. Antonyms multi-line edit box. All right, I'm just going to go through the rest of these real quick. Sec section 810, section 910, section 1010. Anagrams multi-line edit box. All right, so I'm at 1010. If I press F3 one more time. Open in web browser button. I have the option to open this up in the web browser. And uh, I believe one of the cool things that's new to this is that if you open up in the web browser, I do believe you have the choice of web browser uh, in which to open this up. Uh, but there's some other cool things in here. If I press F3 again. Save as file, enter as button. Save as file. Now that's something that I would use quite a bit. And when I press enter here, save as file. File save dialog. File name, wikiamity.txt edit combo box. All right, so what it does is creating a file name is wiki-amity.txt. So wiki, uh, obviously being the application, dash amity being the search term .txt. So if I were to simply press enter, uh, this is going to save this uh, result for me. Successfully save file. Save as file. Enter S. Button. So now uh, let's say I didn't have internet access and I wanted to look up this information again. I should be able to open this up in my notepad just fine. So that's a really cool thing about the Wiktionary thing, uh, the Wiktionary and the Wiki app is being able to save these files. Uh, I also have an option for next list. Next list. Enter N. Button. I have a search. Search button. And then I also have exit. Exit button. If I press F3 again. Reference, Wiktionary 2-2 combo box. Takes me back to Wiktionary, and then I could go ahead and press spacebar. Wikipedia 1-2 combo box. Changes the reference to Wikipedia. Press F3 again. Search term Amity edit box. Now I could do the search term for Amity using Wikipedia. So this is the Wiki app uh, in short. It's going to allow you to search the information that you want to search for uh, through Wikipedia, which is like an encyclopedia, or Wiktionary, which is more like a dictionary. So in general, that's what the Wiki app does. Um, one last thing before I go, um, if I I'm going to go ahead and close this with space in the letter Z as in Zulu. Wiki search W. I'm going to press F1 to get back to the main menu. File manager, F. All right. So um, in the global options, you can choose which default web search option you want to use. So uh, you can do that by pressing space with the letter O and then going down to that option. Um, once you have that set, you can actually press Control, Alt, and W. Search word edit box. And it does a search word edit box. 
So uh, as Earl demonstrated before, Earl, I believe you demonstrated the uh, the web search. Um, so this Control Alt and W will open up yes. the web search dialog box, and then it will by default use the uh, search program in global options. So that could be Google search, that could be Wiktionary or Wikipedia, depending on how you want to set it up. So exactly, that's exactly it. All right, so it looks like file manager F. looks like we're doing pretty good on time. Um, so up next after the wiki app, we're going to talk about the document reader. So Earl, uh, sure, I think that's you. All right, Dr. Simpson. Um, I should say Professor Simpson. Do we have my screen right now or file manager F? Uh, nope, uh, not yet. Not yet. Hmm. It kicks you off when I uh, shared my screen. Okay. All right, but we do now. We're good to go. Okay. So the, the document reader uh, is new to the Braille Sense 6, but is not new to the Braille Sense. Um, those of you who uh, got the Polaris, when, so when you moved on from the U2, have really been persistent in your request for such a utility. Um, and, you know, hymns, we try to to answer your call there. So if you have the YouTube, you're familiar with the, uh, the uh, document reader and what it is. If you have the Polaris, maybe you aren't so much. In a nutshell, what the document reader is, is the ability to uh, read a document with lots of navigation options um, without uh, accidentally affecting the content. So if you've, you've got some, something that you don't want to change, you want to, don't even want to risk it, Yes, I know we can um, uh, open a file in read-only mode in the word processor, um, but it's really not quite the same. It, it really doesn't quite function the same as a document reader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go file manager, F. down to the books folder where it lives, the document reader. Word processor, W, notepad, and email, E, media, M, books, K. And I hear the, the shortcut key or the hot key to open up the books folder is the letter K, so I could have just pressed the letter K. Daisy player, D. To get here, and we've got in the books folder, Daisy player. Document reader, K. Document reader, what else we got? Online Daisy, O. Online Daisy, and. Bookshare download, B. The wonderful, fantastic Bookshare download, which of course is introduced earlier on with the Braille Sense 6. Online Daisy, um, O. Document reader, K. I can't see enough great things about the Bookshare <laughs> download. I just love the way that app works. But the document reader is something that, um, I think most people Open find file, real sense six user manual English B1.511102.1 through this type. Pretty useful. So I'm, I'm in a folder now and it remembers where I was. I, I was I downloaded this to the downloads folder because that's the default folder when you download something. Real sense Bible user manual dot docs to list item. Remember, I just downloaded that uh, you know 10 minutes ago, the Braille Sense Bible, uh, how to use the Bible application. And I've also got the just downloaded today after my machine. Real sense six user manual. Those are the only two files that are supported in the doc reader that are located in the downloads folder at the moment. Okay, so um, the supported file types are DOC, DOCX, HTML, EPUB, uh, XML, uh, AF, RF, uh, rich text format, RTF, <laughs> TXT. Anything you can think of, except um, it, except for uh, Excel and PowerPoint um, file, files, because we've got our own viewers for those applications. In fact, in PowerPoint, you can actually run a slideshow while reviewing your notes, and the person looking at the PowerPoint presentation just sees the slide as you've got your speaker notes. Um, uh, just slip that in there now. But the doc reader. File manager, F can be also launched from the file manager. So I'm gonna go, I, I just basically popped back out to the file manager. Flash list one three list item. I'm gonna go to my flash disk. Columbia Heights Centennial um, folder 135 list item. Down to the downloads folder. Daisy folder 235. Database folder 335 list item. Just here. Documents folder folder. Download folder 535 and, list item. Visual info on demand 2C2DF 4PDA 8K18 list item. I've got all kinds of things in the document folder or the downloads folder. Remember, it only, in the documents uh, reader, it only told us the things that pertained to the document reader. APK PRD March 17th, 2000, FPRD 2,100,000, 
Braille sense six user manual English B1.5 211,000. If I have to be browsing around and I say, wow, I just want to open this document because the document reader, I really don't want to accidentally do anything to it. So I'll just press enter, rather <laughs> scratch that backspace with the letter R. Please select the document. Loading. Rail sense six user manual English B1.5 211,102. And it said Rail sense six. Okay. And it said, please select the document because the document reader was already open. Had it not been opened, uh, it would have launched the document reader and we'd end up where we end up now. And I just basically can start reading in Braille in blissful silence if I'd like to, or I can press the enter key to have it begin continuous reading. reading mode. Braille sense six, please in read and abide by the mode. following safety precautions. The input voltage of the AC adapter is 100V, 240V, and the output wow. manual that, reading mode. That's shocking. B, I'm sorry, B, that's bad. And the continuous reading mode. Um, so, manual all right, so I don't know if you heard what you said, but adapter. You, you're probably better off if you hadn't. <laughs> but it's talking about the safety uh, precautions and uh, the specifications of the Braille sense at the beginning of the manual. And we've got all kinds of things that we can do in here without affecting things. You notice that the voice is different than um, the, the screen reader's voice. So um, let's say that this voice works fine for me when I, I am, uh, oh, when I'm reading a, a uh, you know, I'm just navigating around the device and browsing the web and things like that. But when I really wanna concentrate on things, um, I, I really need things in a higher or a lower register. So maybe I've got some hearing involvements and I wanna raise the pitch, for example. I can raise the pitch independent of the screen reader's voice. Voice pitch six, voice, 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 voice pitch 10. Okay, and um, you know, some people actually do hear this Continuous reading mode better. is 100B, 240B, and the outputs are DC 5B. Manual reading mode Oh, are DC 5B. I think I just found a bug in our, our beta. <laughs> and that, that actually affected the, uh, uh, the the screen reader voice. So I'm gonna actually go hey, back company. to where it was. Rail set voice. Um, voice, voice pitch five. And, and let's go into the the, the menu system here. Um, of course, every application, the menu system is file F, go F down menu. gets us in F2. We've got the file menu. Edit, e, go edit, down menu. Go to G, go, go down, to, read, R, go down menu. Read, let's see what these commands are. Maybe I'm wrong. Selected text, B, backspace, B, menu item. That never happens. Toggle manual, continuous reading mode. Okay. G, enter menu item. So enters toggle manual reading mode. Read current page, C, backspace, menu item. Read current paragraph, P, space dots two. Read current line, L, space dots one. Read current sentence, S, dots two. Read selected text, B. So we've got all these item. things that we can read by here. Toggle manual, continuous reading mode, G, enter menu item. And we're, so that, that's that. So that's not going to tell us anything menu. about our screen reader. Mark, M, pull down menu, file, F, pull down menu. Edit, E, pull, go to, G, pull down menu, read, R, pull down menu. Yeah. Mark M, pull down menu, read R, pull down menu. Um, let's go into read selected text, B, backspace, B menu item. Read selected text. Toggle manual, continuous reading mode, oh, G, nice. read R, but go to edit E, pull down menu. Let's see what we have in the edit menu. Start selection, B, enter B menu item. Got to start selection. Copy, C, enter C menu item. Add the clipboard, P, enter P menu item. We actually have an, an option here that we can add to the clipboard as we go. So. If we're moving around within the document and the document reader, we can actually just go in here and copy, um, add to clipboard, P, enter P menu item. Enter P is the add to clipboard command. Um, so we can copy things from here, put it into our notepad document. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, we can just keep adding to the clipboard until we're ready to paste it in. And um, there you have it. Edit E, pull down menu. File F, pull down menu. Let's go back up to the file menu and see what we've Open. got here. Dialog enter all recent documents. R dialog enter R menu item. Page settings. P dialog page space settings? menu item. Voice settings. S dialog enter menu voice item. Just going voice here. settings dialog. Voice on one to list item. Off two to list item. Off two to list item. That's all the choices we have for voice settings. Braille sense six. Thomas, I could have thought there was a separate way to uh, to switch our our pitch for our voice. In here, I lost it, but. Let me look that up and maybe while you're doing your next session and I can revisit that and uh, apologize for that mishap there. Yeah, not a problem. So up next, we're going to talk about the podcast app. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. It's going to stop Earl's.
There we go. So people should be able, uh, if you're following along visually, you should be able to see my screen. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the podcast app. So um, unlike Wiktionary, uh, I think a lot of people already know what podcasts are about. Um, basically, it's a way to uh, access some of your favorite information. A lot of times people really like listening to, you know, murder mysteries seem to be a popular one, or people want to learn about business, um, or you've got all sorts of information out there, and these things are great. Uh, podcasts are one of my favorite things to listen to, so uh, this is a good topic for me to have. So I'm going to go into my podcast app. I'm going to make sure all my apps are closed. All right. So podcasts are going to be under media. So I could press the letter M. Media player M. And I know podcasts are the letter P. I'll scroll down to it. FM radio R podcasts P. I could press P or I could press enter here. Um, I'm going to press... Oops. Shortcut key, P, hotkey, F2, P. All right, I press space dot three, six, shortcut key, P, hotkey, F2, P. That means F2, P is going to be the global hotkey. So I can press that from anywhere on my Braille Sense 6, and it's going to open up podcasts. Creating feed list. Feed list creation complete. Feed, 60 second science, 142 list item. All right. So first thing I come up against is something called a feed. And this is a feed of my podcasts. Um, on my Braille, it says LI, um, meaning it's a list item, meaning I could press space with dot four to move to the next. ABC News Update 242 list item. I could also press space with dot one to move to the previous. 60 Second Science 142 list item. I could also use first letter, first letter navigation in here. I'll press the letter R. Radio Diaries 1942 list item. I could also jump to top. 60 second science 142 list item. I can also jump to bottom. I can do all those different things. But if let's say I wanted to get a different feed, um, I could press F3 until I get to the podcast search, or I could press enter S as the hotkey. Podcast search dialog. Podcast search site iTunes 1 3 combo box. All right. So podcast search uh, search site is set to iTunes right now. Um, one of three combo box. I could go ahead and change this. Podcast search site digital podcast two three combo box. So uh, I press space without four and the podcast search site changed to digital podcast. I'll press space without four again. Gpotter.net three three combo box. I've got Gpotter. I'll press space with uh, dot one to go back up to iTunes. Digit iTunes one three combo box. Um, one of the interesting things about iTunes is that it gives you a little bit more fine detail uh, or a little bit different way of searching. Um, so I'm, actually, I'm going to press space without four real quick. Digital podcast two, three combo box. So I'm a digital podcast. Uh, and from here, I'm going to press F3. Search word edit box. And I get a search word edit box. And if I press, uh, so if I type in a search term and I press F3 again, that's where my results list will be. I'm going to press space F3 to get back up to the search site. Podcast search site digital podcast two three combo box. And I'm going to press space with dot one to go back up to iTunes. iTunes one three combo box. If I navigate here again, pressing F3. Search mode, category mode one two combo box. I have search mode, so I can search by category. Word input mode two two combo box. Or I can search by word input mode. Um, so let's do word input mode. I can press F3. Search word edit box. Um, and I can type in my search word here. Um, so let's see, iTunes, uh, let's do B -B -Q. barbecue, I'll press Search enter. It. Result list, Malcolm reads how to barbecue right podcast one 184 list item. Malcolm reads how to barbecue right podcast. Malcolm Reed is the man when it comes to barbecue. Successfully added. Result list, Malcolm reads how to barbecue right podcast. I just pressed enter and what it did was it inserted that into my feed. So now if I wanted to listen to Malcolm Reed's podcast, that's going to show up in my feed. Uh, I could press F3 to get to close or I could press F4. 60 second science 143 list item. Now uh, the podcast feed was called Malcolm Reed's. I'll press the letter M. Malcolm Reed's how to barbecue right podcast 1343 list item. All right. And I am almost positive that when I press F3, an episode that's going to come up it's probably going to be about Thanksgiving uh, barbecue. Let's let's test that theory. I'll press F3. Updating feed. 
episode heading one M followers on TikTok and touring Corky's not downloaded one 146 Ooh, list wrong. item. Okay, so I didn't want I didn't want anything about TikTok, so uh, I could go ahead and press space with thought four. Bonafide chili butter based a turkey recipe not downloaded to 146 list item. Hey, there's my turkey recipe. That's the one I want. I'm just going to go ahead and press enter. Start content download. Zero. Five, 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 six, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, five, content download complete. Play. Time. Zero, zero. Welcome zero, to zero, Malcolm zero, Reach. Zero, zero, out of zero, zero, one, ten, right. thirty. So um, all of that happened really fast. Um, so let me explain what just happened. So I downloaded or I chose to feed Malcolm Reed How to Barbecue Right podcast. I scrolled using space with dot four to find the episode that I wanted and I pressed enter. Um, when I pressed enter, what it did was it downloaded and it was announcing the uh, download percentage uh, because the rail sense six is so fast. Um, if you're just relying on speech, it, just sounds like uh, like jumbled up words um, because it's downloading so fast. And then by default, it went ahead and played. Uh, I pressed enter to pause it. Q right, a podcast where we talk. Press enter again to play it. And there we go. So I could go ahead and play podcasts. I could download, I could do search. Um, and then of course, uh, you know, you can go through these different options, download different feeds and do all that sort of stuff. It's a really great way to listen to your favorite podcasts uh, with or without Wi-Fi connection. Um, and let's see. So for the, the sake of time, that's pretty much it for the podcast app. Um, it's very simple, very straightforward. Uh, just like I said, with these Braille first applications, they're designed to just help you get things done. So uh, it should be good to go. Um, all right, Earl. How about it? Okay, so the, the last thing that we've got on the agenda today is a feature that was inspired by our deaf blind folks. But before I move on, guys, I need to redeem myself from the previous section that I did. And I went into the help, you know, if you do space H, it's context sensitive help anywhere you go. And I, I had forgotten that, um, that backspace, <laughs> backspace with the, the the Braille keys are how you adjust all those voice parameters in the uh, the the book reader, or that yeah. So we've got set volume six. You can Braille set the volume set with uh, backspace F. Set, vo set volume eight. Braille set volume six. Braille set six. Okay. Uh, so dots uh, one and two adjust the volume. Dots uh, two and five adjust the rate. Set speed three. Set speed. Set speed. What do you call the speed? And, and then set pitch. Set pitch. Of six. course. Set pitch. Set pitch eight. What they tried to do before, and now now I can actually read. Continuous reading mode. User manual. English manual. For software. Well, he sounds very enthusiastic, doesn't he? Self -self anyway, so we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, uh, a feature that was uh, inspired by some of our deafblind consumers is it's called a uh, computer braille mode. It's turned either turned on or off. And I have actually turned on my video for this because I want people to see um, how it works. I'm actually going to share my screen as well. Um, okay, because I want to show you that that. It, in addition to you know being a great note taker and a fun tablet, it was just such a flexible tool. The Braille Sense can actually be used as a very effective face-to-face -face, uh, communications tool with a person who is deaf, blind, who may not be verbal or may or may not be verbal. I know of uh, some friends of mine who function just fine in a quiet environment, but they uh, would just assume uh, use you know text back and forth, you know, using something like the the Braille sense as a face-to-face -face communications tool in a really loud environment. So the way we do that is we first um, go and make sure that our LCD display is turned on. The Braille sense 6 has a little uh, liquid crystal display that we can turn on within the global options menu. Braille display B on list item. And if I press the letter L to navigate by first letter. Voice volume L7 list item. LCD, L, off list item. Until I get to LCD, I turn that on. On with backlight. Uh, we've got choices on with backlight. On. On. Off. I guess that means without the backlight. On with backlight. 
and uh, with the backlight. And if I go down to the next option, space down arrow or dot four, flip LCD display F off list item. I can actually flip the LCD display. So instead of looking over my shoulder to read what's on the little LCD displays to see what's on my real display, I can flip the orientation so that person can now sit across from me. On. Okay, I'm going to turn that on. And Earl, can I interrupt you for just a moment? Yes. So um, for me, as a sighted guy, Continuous when you, reading ha mode. When you have that, manual reading mode. I accidentally <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, for me, as a sighted guy, it's much easier to read that LCD screen when it's on with backlight. When it's oh, turned okay. to just on, it's really dim and it is hard to see. So doing on with backlight is preferred if you're sharing with a sighted colleague. And then the, the global hockey for that is uh, dots four, five, six with enter. So uh, pressing okay. that once will turn it on and then pressing it again, will turn it on with backlight. I did not know that. Okay, that's good to know. I mean, that certainly shortens up the process a little bit. Um, but let's go ahead and get into the uh, menu system here. Final manager. Let's yeah. press uh, F1, and I'm going to go to Notepad. And I hear that I already have something. Glory, the glory of the one and only. Yeah, it's I've well got something us. from we before, so I'm going to start a new Notepad session because Top of document. you can have to, you know. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and take this little keyboard here. You see it okay, Thomas? Uh, see the little tiny keyboard? Is, am, I, am I sharing my display, my video? Yeah, I can see that. Oh, sorry about that. You muted yourself. Sorry about that. All right, so what I have here is a keyboard that I think my wife bought me for my birthday about uh, seven or eight years ago. It's just, uh, they, they referred to it back then and maybe they have a new version of it called the Amazon Basic Keyboard. Well, the new version, um, uh, you know, so this, this computer braille mode that I'm gonna talk to you about is what um, lets us type on the keyboard and, and see what's on the LCD display while the person who is deaf and blind uh, is looking on the braille display to, to read in their preferred grade of braille and type back on the Braille keyboard. And of course, it, it comes up as text visually on the display. So um, you can either plug in a USB keyboard, just plug and play. Uh, they've got compact ones out there that work really well. Um, this is the, the one that uh, I have laying around the house and I'm gonna flip it on at this point. I just turn on the power and Let's see here now. W no. I am uh, um, going F -F to uh, start T R T R T one the uh, G China on o the keyboard. So one O A R D keyboard period. Uh, yay Bluetooth uh, version five point one chipset. It as all, as Thomas mentioned earlier, it is ultra stable, uh, great range, and by the way, it has a very low battery consumption. Um, so now, as a sighted hearing person, I could go ahead and type and say, Enter. hey, how are you enjoying the webinar? And I might, for good, you know, to, to use a, a good nomenclature from before, GA, go ahead, means I'm, I'm ready for you. And I can, as a blind person, read on my Braille display what you just typed. Use computer Braille in, use computer Braille in, put off. And then when I when I press the first key on the Braille display, it actually just um, put me. It, it turned computer Braille input mode off. So now, now I can type using contracted Braille. I just love this feature. U R E low you, feature period. You get it? If as soon as you start typing on the computer keyboard, um, the QWERTY keyboard, it turns computer input mode on. And as soon as I start typing on the Braille keyboard, it turns computer input mode off. But 
as far as the output is concerned, it honors the grade of Braille that I have it set to, which in my case is contracted UEB Braille. Um, that is phenomenal. What else is that I can also, um, even if we're, we're not a deaf blind person, but maybe we're a newly blinded person and we wanna learn how to read Braille uh, and we're working on it and especially contracted Braille, we can use the QWERTY keyboard along with the Braille Sense um, because if I press uh, the second key from my space bar here to the left, file manager F, um, it's just like getting into my, my menu. So I can just use my arrow keys on the keyboard. Word processor, notepad, and Just like I was using the Braille keyboard uh, on the Braille display. Media M. I can um, get into my menus for the application that I'm in at the moment here. Let's go back up. I'll press N for notepad. Use computer Braille input on. New paragraph. And um, I, I can get into the menu system by pressing the first key to the left of my space bar. File F. Just menu. like the Alt key, right, on the Windows key. Yeah, e, and now I'm in the menu. menu system for the application I'm in. Uh, I'll press Escape to get out of there. Cancel. File help. F. Menu I press F1, and just like you would expect, we get file help. Uh, we, we open the help system for the application that I'm in right Cancel. now. Plus, we've got some other little bonuses here. F3. Um, F3. Real off. Is dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. Okay, so Braille on and off Braille is F4. Is among us. We have seen his glory. Voice off. Voice on and off is F5. Voice on. Is dwelling among us. We have seen his voice volume. Mate. Voice volume. And if I hold down the shift, it'll bring my volume the other direction. Voice rate eight. Voice pitch six. So even though it was inspired voice nine. by folks with hearing loss, um, you know, people who are deaf blind, uh, this is really a great tool for facilitating the learning of Braille, um, as well as maybe you just like to type on a Braille keyboard, not, or rather a QWERTY keyboard. Now I'll show you something. I'm going to lock the top panel on my Braille display. Top panel off. It's welcome. We have seen this morning. So now I still have access to the front panel. So maybe I want to do some multimedia things on the front panel or some things with the application keys. But I am going to go ahead and close the, the device here, the, the BrailleSense 6. And I'm going to take my little keyboard. And I have little Velcro pieces on top of my keyboard. Uh, personally, I prefer. I think I'm going to change this to do something with magnets rather than Velcro. But the point is kind of a proof of concept. Now I've got a QWERTY keyboard that I can use and I can carry around. And you see, I'm shaking it all over the place. That sucker's not coming off. And um, now, because I've got my top panel locked, I can sit here and type uh, or use my my Braille sense without affecting. Uh, what's going on on you know with with the braille keyboards pretty cool pretty cool stuff what do you think thomas yeah that is really cool um especially that last thing that you just talked about i uh i thought a few, that you might get you <laughs> yeah there's a few people specifically um that have been asking for something like this for some time so well, that's there's, really there's cool one more thing that i did want to mention there is a, in the notepad right now we don't know if we're going to apply this globally or just keep it as a notepad thing for communications purposes. But, but um, an interesting feature that was requested by some of our deafline consumers was the ability to start populating the text from the right edge of the Braille display. And so when you basically like a, a, a ticker tape, right? <laughs> Something like that, where you can, you can always be checking the right edge for the new text that's coming into view on the Braille display. We haven't quite mastered that one yet, but it is in a feature of this version and you will find it on the settings menu in, um, in the notepad. So that's all I got for the, the computer Braille input. It is 201. Oh, I, can, I consider that a victory. <laughs> one minute off from our agenda. It was my screen sharing. No, no, it was, it was my trying to adjust my voice rate. I blame it all on me. There we go. Well, <laughs> I think what we ought to do now here is 
let's go ahead and open it up into some Q and A. Um, so let's go ahead and start with those questions put in the chat first. Um, so a couple of things about this Q and A session. We're going to keep it on topic. It's going to be about the Braille Sense Six new firmware. Um, so we don't have time to discuss uh, different products and all that sort of stuff. We're going to be talking, uh, taking Q&A about uh, the content that we shared here. Um, we are also limiting it to uh, about to one hour. Um, so uh, in about 58 minutes, it will be cut, cut off here. So we're going to keep it short. We're going to keep it concise and we're going to keep it on topic. So Earl, let's go ahead and get through some of these. Um, the first question I got in the chat uh, was a direct message uh, saying, what is the expected battery life? Um, and in general, battery life is really hard to determine, right? Because it just it's based on what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, right. You, you know, but I would say that it's going to get you through the day. You know, um, yeah. I, I hear people boasting as long as as uh, you know, 20 hours, but well, what are they doing? Are they like, going from meeting to meeting and turning it on every, once every three hours or something? Or are they streaming videos um, on YouTube? Uh, it's gonna make a, a profound difference <laughs> depending on what you're doing, but uh, it's kind of a rule of thumb that I use. It's the same rule of thumb that I use for my phone. At the end of the day, I plug it in, charge it up, and I'm good to go for the next day. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. I think all day battery is a, a good way to put it. Um, all right, uh, so let's find out here. Um, can you add another Bible translation to the Bible program? If not, can we at HIMS do that? So um, I'm assuming the question is, can we add a sixth or seventh or eighth Bible translation to the Bible app? Um, I don't know how to answer that one, to be honest with you. So, Earl, if you have any insight, into that. <laughs> I don't have any insight other than the, 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 the fact that is the, the developers who have added the ones that were in, uh, that are here. And if if you have specific ones that you would want to add, if they're available and if, if it's doable, I'm sure they would entertain the possibility. Yes. Um, up next, uh, a person writes that. Uh, they are from Denmark and is wondering about when the firmware is going to be released in his or her country. Um, we don't know. HIMS, uh, the company that Earl and I are with, HIMS Inc., we are U.S. based and we focus on U.S., Canada. Um, so for Denmark, uh, I recommend that you reach out to your local provider of HIMS products, um, or you could also reach out to Selvis Healthcare. Yeah. Um, Question, how did you decide which Bible versions to use? By the way, <laughs> on this app, and need to learn some of the finer functions. Glad it is back. Oh, I can answer that. Sure. We, did, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't decide. <laughs> they, so there's some developer had decided which ones, and uh, I think they're probably the same ones that were included in the YouTube, if I recall. Um, so I really don't know the reason behind it. Um, somewhere along the way, someone made a decision. Mm -hmm. um, so somebody writes, can you please repeat the commands for finding and downloading the Bible app? Do any of the translations have a Bible concordance? So in general, um, to find and download the Bible app, that's going to be on the HIMSS website under the Braille Sense 6 uh, user resources page. So if you go to the Braille Sense 6 page, will be a link for downloadable resources and you'll find the app uh, in there. Uh, I think also another good way of doing it, if you just send in an email asking for it, I think we should be able to provide you with a download link. Yeah, and instructions. You can, you yeah. can send an email to support at imstashing.com and those guys are always happy to just shoot you over the, the information. I just did a, a, a Google search for Bible hymns and it, it first hit was, you know, brought me right to the page where it was located. Um, another person writes, 
Um, are there some kind of directions that will tell me how to upgrade? You know what? That is, you know, I'm going to blame myself for this one. Um, because when I was putting this agenda together, it didn't dawn on me that uh, I should probably explain to people how to do the upgrade. File manager. F. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen this time. All right. So I'm sharing my RailSense 6 for those of you following along visually. I'm at File Manager. Um, to upgrade your RailSense 6 from the main menu, you're going to want to go or press the letter U for utilities. Calculator C. And then you're going to want to press the letter U again. Upgrade. Online one free combo box. So U for utilities, U for upgrade, and then it puts you into a combo box. Uh, you are going to have two options. You're going to have an online option and an offline option. If you press enter when it's set to online, that's going to use your Wi-Fi connection to download and install the firmware. You could also choose the offline method. And what that will do is it will um, search for the firmware on like an SD card or USB drive. So you'll have to download it, uh, put it into a place that's accessible to the BrailleSense 6. Uh, usually the root of the SD or USB, and then choose offline that way. Um, for simplicity, press U, then U, then press enter and choose online. Um, how do you manually download the new apps once you have the upgrade or will they automatically be installed? All of the apps and features that we have demonstrated today come included with the exception of the Bible app. Uh, so that is an optional app that you will have to download and install separately. Um, Sam writes, will, or with there already being a word processor, text editor, and Daisy player on the six, what additional purpose or functionality does the document reader serve? Okay, I, I can feel that. So, uh, a few things. I mean, so the, you, as I mentioned before, you can actually open in a view only mode into the word processor uh, a document. But what the document reader allows you to do is use different, you know, lots of different navigation commands that are not available in those uh, other applications that you mentioned. So actually, the document reader works very similarly to the Daisy Book Reader. It also allows you to adjust the speech. Uh, parameters separate from uh, the uh, the screen reader, which is not an option that you have uh, in those other device. Well, with the exception of the Daisy Book Reader, um, you know, it doesn't allow you to. You know, you, you you only have the one option to adjust your speech in the Notepad and the Word processor. Uh, it's just a. It's really just kind of a a preference thing. Mo I, I I gotta say, in all the time that I've used the YouTube, I have the document reader. And I really never use it. It's only having to uh, prepare for this presentation here today that I really <laughs> realized the, the, the benefit and the value of it. But a lot of our end users from the YouTube days recognized that value a long time ago. And um, it, you know, that's, that's why it's been included into the six. All right. Um. Does the document reader support PDF files? The answer is yes. Um, granted that the PDF files have to be accessible, right? So it does not have like OCR built in. Um, so it has to be an accessible PDF. So they're obviously, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Um, Caroline writes, document reader is for reading only and offers more navigation commands than the notepad or the word processor. It's becoming my new favorite app. It also does a much better job of remembering my place in a file. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, you can also set uh, characters per line and all that sort of stuff as well, right? All right. Um, so uh, Brian writes, can you add further search engines to your great app like Spotify, TuneIn, or Google? Uh, uh, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued, I think. Right. Uh, if you subscribe to a podcast, will it sync to your subscriptions with your iTunes account? Um, I don't know. 
Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, yeah. That is an excellent question. I don't believe that it actually does sync with your iTunes account. I believe it's creating a separate feed within itself. It, it's true. I believe it's um, just pulling it down within the application. Um, when you, yeah, okay. it, yeah. I never put in my iTunes account information, so it shouldn't sync. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you please briefly explain the difference between playing the podcast in the podcast app or the media player? That is an excellent question. Earl, do you want to take this one? Or do you want want me to take it? Okay. (laughs) I was waiting for the answer because you said it was an excellent question. Okay. So the podcast app itself has, um, it doesn't have the same level of controls and functionality as the media player does. Um, so I, uh, if I were to listen to a podcast on there, I would download them and then play them in the media player. Um, to be honest with you, the podcast app is something pretty new to me on the Braille Sense 6. And so I haven't been able to test it out fully using like the media keys and all that sort of stuff. Um, my preference, just because I'm more familiar with it, would be use a media player uh, because I know those keys. I know that functionality. And I do believe that you're going to have more levels of granularity in the media player than you are within the podcast. App. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you there. Uh, really? Thomas. Yeah, because I love the podcast app. I mean, it, it just doesn't get easier to do a podcast search, um, download it, have it automatically start playing. And that level of granularity is identical because you can actually use your cursor routing buttons on the, on the six to uh, to shuttle around that podcast. So if you want to skip ahead a little bit, you, you know, go back. You can use your cursor routing buttons to navigate just like you can in the media player. Oh, consider me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, this is why we have choices, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I would choose media player because I'm more familiar with it. That's why I would choose it. Um, all right. So uh, let's see. That's all of the questions that we have in chat right now. Um, we do have some hands up. So let's go ahead and get to some of these hands that are up. Uh, first, we have Mike Stern. Mike, go ahead. Mr. Stern, how you, you should, doing? You should have the ability to unmute yourself. You know, believe, right as you called my name, I'm trying to unmute and it wasn't <laughs> working. You know, it, it never fails. Okay. So my question has to do with um the def- when you do a search in the podcast you've got those three defaults that you can search from i mean itunes um digital and i don't remember the third one um, otter cast potter. otter cast yeah for a minute i thought it was harry potter cast i wasn't <laughs> sure but um but here's here's the deal or here's what happened to me last week i was doing a search, I'm a baseball fan, I was doing a search on a local uh, guy that we have doing a podcast called Extra Innings. And I came up with about 24 different Extra Innings podcasts. And so because we don't have a a description feature to, to find out what the podcast is about. I had suggested to Chris or whoever was, was listening, whoever I wrote to, that maybe we get um, an, a description, you know, feature put in so that you can, you know, read about what the podcast is about. But what I was thinking was iHeartRadio, they say they have they're the number one place for podcasts so but can you search within iHeartRadio or only these three options or do you just do it digitally and and hope for the best uh, well those are the <laughs> the repository that you select is the one that you're going to be searching um and so they, so far we've only got the three but that's uh, subject to change down the road and by the way, um, when, after you add the feed to your podcast, you can actually go and read the description. Is that what you're talking about? Well, about no, I was actually talking about when I, I do a search and I get 24 hits and I didn't know which one was the yes. one for me. That's what I'm talking about. Gotcha. Yeah, I can see that. There's there's a lot of uh, similarly named podcasts and um, unless you look, know the one that you're looking for. 
specifically. Like, this particular, I, I don't want to, you know, go too long here, but this particular one was on iHeart. So what do I do? Just, you know, do a search on for uh, under the digital option or the iTunes. I guess they're they're usually on other. I mean, iTunes probably has all the iHeart ones too. I would probably. think. I would yeah. think so. Yeah. Well, that's okay, a good question that we could, we could make note of and. Um, Really, what you're looking for is an easier way to identify the podcast that you're most interested in, you know, because you you might do a search and you come up with 24 different options with the same name. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Yeah. You got it. Duly noted. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Mike. All right. Up next, we have Sharon. Sharon, you should have the ability to unmute. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Well, I forgot to lower my hand, but you answered the question about the Bible. But I wanted to say that this is an awesome machine, and I just love it. And um, thanks for y'all doing the the uh, webinar. It's just been really in informative, and I appreciate it very much. Oh, uh, thank you. You're welcome and, and thank you. And I used to be Sharon Klug, so I know you know who I am. Right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we, we go back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good job, guys. <laughs> thank, thank you, Sharon. Um, all right, Earl, actually, um, I'm going to take this opportunity uh, to segue into something. If some, we we're just talking about podcasts. If somebody wanted to learn more about this firmware release in a podcast format, where should they go? That, that question was directed at me. Yeah. It was a shameless plug. I'm, I'm trying to get you to say, <laughs> well, 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 let me get, well, they go to our website. Well, for the uh, the podcast, didn't we just release a podcast with? Uh... <laughs> yes, there is. In fact, if you received the email announcing the uh, the release of the the firmware, there is a direct link to that podcast uh, in there, where it covers all the features that. Uh, well, Jenny and I actually, she asked me to be part of it, cover all the features of uh, you know most of the stuff that we covered here today, as well. So. So yeah, you it's can, called SenseCast. It is called SenseCast, all one word, right? Yep. Yep. And you could get that on Spotify or Anchor FM. Uh, there's a few different places that you could find that at. So it's called SenseCast. All right. Uh, up next, we have a phone caller, uh, phone number ending in 2689. 2689, you should be able to, there you go. Hi, how are you today? Um, this is Shirley and, Hi, Shirley. um, I, I did find uh sense cast using your app, actually the podcast app, but I can't remember for sure which of those, um, three places that I found it in. But, uh, anyway, um, the, the thing I mainly wanted to know, um, the, the document reader thing, will that. And I don't know, I may have missed part of, of what you said there, but can you open Word documents? Yes. With that? Yeah, and you can pretty if, much open if so, everything. <laughs> maybe you could quickly review. I'm really having a problem. I'm very frustrated because I'm trying to read a book right now that is a, a DO a DocX type mm -hmm. file. And every time I reopen that book it goes back to the beginning of the book there seems to be no way to save my place there are no you know um chapter As, numbers no page numbers in this book or anything so you're doing I'd that like in the to know if you can make it easier for me so you, you're doing that in the documentary right no, or, I have not. That's why I'm asking you. Oh, yeah. I'm just yeah, sure. opening oh, it yeah, as a yeah. file and it's opening in, oh, you know, you know I think it's opening in the. Browse to it at the way you usually would in the file manager, right? Right. Can, instead of pressing enter on it, press backspace R to read. Okay. Okay. And then when you're, you're, you're reading, right, like I said, you can adjust the speech parameters, you know, the, the rate and all that well, stuff. Well, I read it just in Braille. 
Oh, that, okay, cool. But it, I noticed so, when I opened the, 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 you know, the, um, whatever that new program is, the document reader, reader thing, it starts reading with speech. Yeah. Now, you is there a way to the, turn that off? So I just, yeah, just can read in braille. So, so just pressing enter is going to cycle that on and off. It'll go bit back and forth between, okay. between a manual and continuous reading mode. So just if it's continuously reading mode, press enter and it'll stay that way. When you okay. want to, um, when you want to do a bookmark, I believe it's the same as the Bible app. I think you can do a, a enter M to insert a bookmark. You can actually in a in the this is another great thing about the document reader. You can actually insert multiple bookmarks and have and jump between them uh, oh, well, in the document reader. Your place once you get out of the file. Yeah, it, it's. Uh, oh, well, actually, it should remember where you were uh, in the in the document reader. Let me just see. Here, what, what, well, it I, certainly doesn't in the word processor. Every time I open it, it goes back to the beginning of that book, and I'm so okay. I'm very frustrated um, to read this book and finding my place every time. Um, I'm going to start screen share. Okay, I was. Um, Let's see here. Everybody's... I mean, that's one thing you guys really, really need to look at is when you're using these word processing um, programs and stuff, because it won't save a bookmark and it won't save your place. Um, well, let's just see here. We're going to go back to the, the book reader here. I think I've still got it open. Oh, no, actually, I don't. It would be nice if there was a way that you could, you know, you had a setting that would automatically, you know, open files with a certain program or something yeah. if you wanted. <laughs> Surely I got to share something. Them. I got to share something with you. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling so stupid because remember the last demo I did was keyboard. I, I locked my top panel. I forgot that I locked my top panel. <laughs> <laughs> so let me go into That's the, funny. Let's go into the book. Document reader. Okay. Document reader. Okay, so it's just basically when I get in, it just reads the, the line that I'm on now, and I'm just gonna. Hey, thirty-four thousand. I'm just go ahead and read down just a bunch of times with my, um, with my scroll buttons, so and I let's see here. Let's see, distributor from whom you purchased. Okay, that's where I'm gonna put my. Cursor. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually put a bookmark in here. Set mark dialog. Mark name. Edit box. And I'll just call it demo. Four. Five. For lack of it. Mark inserted. Distributor from whom you purchased. Oh, there's a number. Let me just do this again. Set mark dialog. Mark name. Edit box. Yeah, let's call it mark one. One. Mark inserted. Distributor from whom you purchased. So I, I I've uh, I'm gonna get out of here. Let's see where I end up when I come back into the book. Document reader, okay. Uh, in okay. fact, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna go make sure that I've, I'm gonna bring up my list with uh, F1, F4. Test name, Google search, one, five, list item. Test name, no, you find five, list item. I'm gonna shut down. Test name, no, you find five, list item. Test name, no, you find five, list item. Test name, no, you find five, list item. Test name, no, four, five, list item. Test name, since Bible three, five, list item. Test name, web browser, two, five, list item. Okay, sorry. Test name, Google search, one, five, list item. Test name, Google search, one, five, list item. Reader is not in my list of open apps. I'll go into the I'll go into it now. Now, do you intentionally have that speech on like that? Uh, yeah, do you believe it? <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. I was just curious. It was just part of the demo. I sped it up. That, right? No, no, that's okay. I just wanted to know if there was no choice in that or if that was the way you had I, it. I did it on purpose. Okay. Distributor from whom you purchased and boom, Shirley, I am back exactly where I was before I bailed out of this document the first time. Okay. Well, I will definitely try it because it's just extremely frustrating. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope you guys will, will look at a way that, you know, when you are reading something like that and, and go back into it, it would certainly be nice if it stayed where you left off. But I'll keep it in mind that this program will do it at least. So thank you. And I love the podcast thing, by the way. It's awesome. really neat. <laughs> I'm enjoying great. it a lot.
Glad to hear it. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. All right. So we've got a we got a host of hands up. So uh, up next we have Louis. Uh, Louis, you should be able to unmute yourself. Go ahead, unmute yourself, and ask your question. And after Louis, Louis, we're going to have uh, Jean. So Louis, go ahead, unmute yourself. All right. So while we're waiting, uh, Jean, go ahead, unmute yourself. Audio now unmuted alert. Hi. It is unmuted. Hi. Unmuted. Um, I'll plus a I, button. Let's see. I'm trying to silence my and phone. Now lower the <laughs> and, <laughs> and you got to get your phone. Yeah, no, no. It's just it's just my landline and I never answer it. So um, <laughs> I have it in a different room. I turned off the one that was in here. But um, number, number one, how did you get Tom's voice? I really like that voice. I like it better than the one. The well, then, voice. then you should go get it. Um, so I tried looking on the website and I couldn't find it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm still sharing my screen, right, Thomas? Yeah. I mean, maybe it doesn't matter to Gene, but I am screen right to my screen. I, I, I just pressed um, F1 to go to the file manager. I'm going to press S to go to settings. Oh. And I'm going to go press from V for Carolina, voice. So and surely this is where you do it, Gene, under the voice. Uh, and I've got in here, so you go to download and you come up with a whole list of them and Tom is listed among them. Just press enter on it to download it and then you can select it as your voice. So you download that in settings, right? You go to settings to download. Yep. Yeah, from okay. the main menu, it's S for settings, V for and voices, and then this meeting alert. Uh, tab over to the download button. Okay. And then you yeah. got to install it. And there's another install button as well. Oh, okay. Um, okay, the other question is, I don't know, I hope I didn't, th those real small little buttons where it says um, about the small, um, you know, with, with the P on the upper right hand, um, it's, it seemed like the, the thing is really, really small. So what would you put in there? Oh, uh, that's your power. No, no, uh, no. Oh, I see. No, wait a minute. What? No, it's wasn't a, there... Are you talking about the, the, the USB port? Alert. Yeah, I thought there was like there was a V and a P, and the P yeah. is the P is the power, and the V is the video. Oh, okay. But so I you, so you can connect any number of things. You can, you can plug in a, a USB C uh, thumb drive, for example. Uh, you can plug in a USB C hub, right? Couldn't you, Thomas? And oh yeah, absolutely. Into that, uh, and then you can support. You know, the, the hub might have uh, Ethernet on it if you want a nice, uh, strong Ethernet connection. It might have HDMI on it if you want to connect it to a monitor, a smart TV, and watch like Netflix movies with your friends or something. Audio oh, okay. Yeah, so that's but what that's up, But do but um, but to hook up the Braille sense, can you hook it up to a computer? What, what would you use for that? You'd use the back one. You'd use the power one. To connect oh, it to your computer. Yeah. Okay. Brittany but it's, has but it doesn't seem alert. like um, it doesn't. Terry Gorman has joined the meeting alert. Well, I guess I guess you would do it. With Hi, Gary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So P is for power and PC. Right. And PC, okay. yes. Politically okay. correct. No, I'm kidding. Oh. Uh, yeah. So that's an important point too. A lot of people don't know that. Um, if you want to, you know, power your your uh, Braille sensor, charge it off the USB drive. Know that when, unless you tell it to keep the USB ports active, when say the monitor goes to sleep, um, you know, it, 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 when that power, it loses power, it'll stop charging uh, the Braille sense. Also, in other words, what you would have to do is plug one end um, into the computer and one end into the, the Braille sense, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you would do that just with the Carl regular... Smith has left oh, the meeting minute. alert. Would you do that with the regular power button that you sent with this? Because um Oh, I'm sorry, say that again, Gene. You know, the, the power button that was sent with the um six that doesn't let's see, I'd have to look at it. You mean the power block? 
yeah, it look, yeah, the, the looks like um. Oh, you could do either, or you could either just power it off of the power block, which has these little tongs that you know that flip down out of the power block. These little prongs, I should say, and you can plug into that and plug into AC, or you can plug into your computer and you can charge it that way. The AC is going to be a quick charge. Yeah. Uh, the USB okay. port is going to be a slower charge. And, you know, some of us oh, I just, I just now noticed that you could unplug it from the, the power block. I didn't know you could even do it. Yeah. Before. Yeah, it seemed kind of tight. I never. The first time. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I think I, okay. All right. Thank Excellent. you. You're welcome. All right. And Louie, if you're with us, Louie, unmute, Louie, wow. unmute yourself. Otherwise, we're moving on. Or I'm going to start singing. Come on. We, we don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, Earl, I watched your YouTube video where you did a presentation about doing music. And uh, yeah. did, didn't you do some stuff with the Braille Sense 6? I did. I did. You know, I, I people actually pay me money to stop singing at the end of the night. Um, it's called tips. And, you know, I play, play from time to time. And, and I use the Braille Sense as my onstage companion to fire my backing tracks, which, by the way, I record all by myself and uh, got a I've got a hodgepodge of microphones thrown onto an acoustical kit, running into a mixer, and I just I use a program called Reaper to do my multi-tracking, and then I I go out and I and so I I lay, lay down some drums and some bass and some guitar and keyboards, and then I go out and usually with a guitar to play lead over the top, um, and you got kind of got the one man band thing going on. It's like karaoke, except you know. Not as good. Kidding. <laughs> uh, phone caller five two nine two. You should be able to unmute yourself. Five two nine two. Star six. Hi. Magic. Yeah. Hi. Um, this is Allison. Um, I have. Well, first of all, I hope you're going to record this because you went through the Bible thing really quickly so i'm not sure i got all of it but my big thing is sometimes um when i'm in email and it just keeps the the keys the cells keep going and going and going and going mm -hmm. and sure. i have to reset sure so um for this particular webinar we're going to keep it about the this firmware release um well and the, and the it'll happen where release that's what i'm saying so it happens with this firmware at least it didn't happen with the previous version is that well it happens with this occasionally too and then i have then i have to reset and then it works yeah I, you know what based on what you just said i'm a little suspicious about um the network connection um when's the last time you reset that modem oh uh, power, cycle, actually, power, power cycle the modem uh, so i don't know one yeah, other, because, yeah go ahead thomas one other thing that happens when your battery gets depleted enough um what will end up happening is it will turn off bluetooth and wi-fi to preserve battery so if well, I have it gets, plugged in, so that's not the issue. So if your battery gets depleted to, let's say, just a couple percent and you plug it in anyway and it gets up to 100%, um, that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth doesn't turn back on Energy. automatically. You it does automatically turn off, off, but not turn on. So I always recommend that you press backspace with dots one, four, five, six system dialogue to toggle your network on and 50 off. menu one hundred percent original side fit, fit the window so. checked menu item. You are currently on a check. Hey, you are hey Louis, we hear you now. Yes, indeed, we do. I hate so, the theater. Um so <laughs> so in regards to your uh in regards to your email issues, uh, we recommend that you contact him's technical support. Um, so if you want to email, it's support at hymns incom or the phone number is the same, 512-837-2000. And by the way, we have a new tech support person. Her name is Pamela, and I hear she is fantastic. So if you get a chance to talk with Pamela, 
uh, make her fill out home, please. So. Okay. When will we know the recording? Because going through the download for the Bible was pretty quick, and I'm not sure I got it all. It well, says it's being point. recorded. Just left the meeting. Yep. So this uh, video is being recorded, and it's going to be posted up on YouTube, um, I would say on Monday. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Louis. Okay. Go. Can you hear me now? Yep. We can Go for it. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. Earl, how are you doing? I'm great. How about you? I'm still doing good. Trying to stay okay. out of trouble. And I must say that uh, Wikipedia, it is the best. I have been <laughs> doing a lot of my research in a quick hurry and it works like a champ. Cool. Um, but I still am having an issue because I do a lot of, a lot of traveling. To and I need to, I want to be able to use my uh, device to connect via Zoom and also with uh, Google Meet, but I don't, I still am having an issue with that camera thing. Has that been resolved yet in terms Wait, of being able to use an external camera? Oh, um, so you do have an external camera. Yes, I do. I've tried four different cameras uh, and... Uh... And I tested them with other Android devices to ensure that the camera was not the issue, was not a hardware issue. And they work great. They are seen, they activate, and they work fine. But for some odd reason, the Braille Sense won't let me switch. Oh, no. um, Thomas and I just went over this yesterday because he said that his camera wasn't working, but then it was. So um, I think turn on the device first, right, Thomas? And Power it up, then plug it in. I've done both. Plug, plug in okay, after or a little plug in, then power up the unit so that it can engage the hardware as it sees it. And, uh, you know, it's it's just something. And I even went into the Android settings to see if I can find something in there that I can tweak or enable or disable something. Oh. I disabled the internal camera, and guess what? It didn't do any, make any difference. Yeah, and Android 10 does not by default support USB cameras from what I understand um, in, in many instances. So, um, so it where does are you sometimes, using, but I'm using the, the, the Logitech, what is it, uh, C95E, I want to say. Uh, I'd have to look it up. But is it, have, you, have you tried any of the Logitech models? USB or, or Bluetooth? USB. Okay, USB. Um, no, yes, I did. I did try a couple of them. I have a Logitech that uh, I use on my wife's computer, and it works great. And I hooked uh, it up to this device. It's easy, but it doesn't want to switch to it, hmm. which is rather weird. Okay. I mean, so... it sees the hardware, but it doesn't want to activate it. The funny thing about it, though, as soon as I switch to it, this particular camera has an LED light. Mm -hmm. The light comes on. But then it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't uh, activate it, which is huh. kind of strange. Then to top it off, when I power off the unit, the camera still light stays on. So the power to the USB is still, uh, if I leave something plugged in, it'll be draining my battery. Yeah, I would try as kind of as an experiment, you can go to maybe to the color reader and, and try to switch the camera in there and see if it switches. Well, a lot of these applications, um, that are line specific assume that they're going to be running on a cell phone so they really don't make a provision for using a separate camera but i'm sorry yeah. we're we kind of digress only because we're supposed to be sticking to the features of the new firmware sure but what, what i would i would invite you to do is just kind of con contact us offline we can uh, uh we can, well, we can i've sent emails stuff. to to him and i've and i've uh I've asked questions and and I keep all I keep getting is the same thing that I was getting from Freedom. I will call you back and nobody has called me back on this issue. It's really disaggravating because I bought two of the devices, one for my office and one for personal use. And I'm de I'm just seeing that I'm not gonna get the support that I need and I can't be carrying multiple devices. My purpose for getting the Braille Sense uh, was so that I can carry one device and be perfectly happy because of the experience that I've had with previous HIMSS devices being so dependable. And then mm -hmm. now it's like, I don't know, this, I don't know if this was released prematurely, but whatever it is, I hope it gets fixed because it's really aggravating. Sure. So yeah, we'll be in touch with you, Louis. We have your contact information um, and we'll try to document the exact process uh, to make sure that you're able to get your camera working. Uh, as, as Earl just mentioned, we, uh, 
we just went over this uh, yesterday. Um, and yeah, so we were able to get the cameras working just fine. We, we plugged it in and I don't know what the difference was, but we're gonna look into it um, and we'll, we'll let you know what the solution is for that, okay? Sounds good to me. Look forward to it. All right, thanks, Louie. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right, uh, up next we have uh, Andrea. Andrea, go ahead and unmute yourself. And then after Andrea, we're gonna go okay. to Carrie's iPhone. Unmuted. Yep, hey Andrea, how's it going? Hi, good, good. And oh, I love, I love my, I'm sorry. I have my, I have a, a Bluetooth speaker turned on. Sorry about that. Can you oh. hear me okay? Yes. Okay, um, I wanted to ask about web radio. I know you're trying to keep this um, to the new features. I just, I don't see, and, and I had a question about podcasts too, but how do you get into the web radio? I don't see where to, except within the podcast, I can get to it, but there's got to be a different way to get there. Web radio. So there, really on the Braille sense, there are different applications that you can, you can buy. And, and what I've done, I mean, not buy, I mean, like, like iHeartRadio, which I don't have on my Braille sense, but I've got like so Pandora. Okay, no, no, I don't mean that. Inside the podcast, there's a thing that says web radio, and it's also talked about in the manual, where you can actually go in and download channels and stuff. It's there. Right, and you can't find. I, I don't know how to get to it, except from what's in podcasts. Is there another way to get there? Is it on a menu by itself somewhere? I wish, you... I don't see it in my media player. I wish we could disable the chat too, because it really just reads over top of everybody. <laughs> um, the... And I don't get half of what they're saying because it's reading over the top of you guys. Anyway, um, it, uh, well, every... I'm going to give you, okay. a, I'm going to give you a hint with a, regards to what you just said about the chat. So if you are you using JAWS as your screen reader. I'm on my phone, actually. I know in oh. JAWS you can turn it off. I'm on my phone. Yeah. And there isn't any way to, yeah. Yeah. Three finger double tap will actually turn it off. Turn off speech. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. It turns okay. off the speech. Yeah. But okay. let's, let's, let's take up the, uh, the, the web radio uh, offline. Feel free to hit us back up here at, at the uh, support address. Okay. Um, yeah. Support at himstashing.com. I just thought if you could tell me how to get into it, that's all I wanted. Um, sure. The, uh, the, my, go the, ahead. What, the web radio is in the media player. So all you, all you want to do is open up the media player. Um, if you hit F2 to open up the menus, the web radio is the last option in there. There. Okay. All right. That's what I, okay. That's the question I had. Um, I can uh, fool with it once I get into it. I just, it's hard. It, I don't see in the manual where it tells anywhere, and I'm probably missing it, how to get to it. That's what I, that, now in the podcast, and I talked to Chris this morning about this, um, I know you can navigate within podcasts. Um, is there a way to hold your place? Say you listen to a podcast and you listen to half of it, and I can put a mark in, but if I go back, it starts over again, completely, like kind of what Shirley was saying, except in the podcast app, it doesn't, it doesn't hold your place, like, you know, say I listen to it halfway and I have to stop mm -hmm. then I go back I've got to get find the I've got to find the mark again and go back to where I was um is there a way to to get it to hold your place other than putting in a mark because it doesn't retain where you where you were it doesn't retain where you were but does it does it allow you to jump to your mark yes that's fine I just yeah. wish it could somehow retain your spot when you go back and start listening to it again. Sure, I hear you. Um, you know what you could do is keep the app open and just pause it. Yeah, I can do that, I can do that. Yeah, otherwise you, the, the bookmark is what's, what we have now, but that's okay. that's a good point, I will pass that well, that's on. That's what Chris the... said, and maybe there's a way that could be put in at some point. Mm -hmm. He said that that was actually sounded like a good idea that, you know, maybe, um, I, I really like it. It works really well. And I like that you started out with some feeds and I'm able to do, oh, what about, okay, say you finished with an episode. Those episodes are being downloaded to the, to the books, to the Braille Sense, right? Right. Okay. Is there a way to delete one, the episode you finished with? Because I think <laughs> you can delete question. the whole block 
but it doesn't, you don't seem to be able to delete individual episodes unless I'm missing something. Yeah, I don't, I, you know what, Thomas, that's, that's a good point. Where do those live? Do you know? Those, yeah, uh, they're in the podcast folder, uh, just as MP3. Okay, can I go in there and delete them from there? Yeah, absolutely. If I just want to get rid of, mm -hmm. okay. And I know I can delete all of them. If there's a mass delete, like if you want to delete, you played all of your 48 hours that you downloaded and you want to delete the whole group, but I just didn't see how to delete individual ones. Yeah, so you, from your file manager. Yeah, so go into flash disk, podcast folder. Uh, you're going to have a list of your feeds in there. Um, you can do space D on the feed, on the folder name. That's your feed to delete the whole feed. Uh, if you press enter on the folder name, like the Malcolm Reed, how to barbecue, right one. I press enter on that. Uh, I've got the podcast as an MP3 file, space D to delete that one, enter A to okay. select all, space D to delete all of them, um, okay. or space bar to select the individual ones, and then space okay. C. So. And the best way to navigate within a podcast episode is use the the, um, the cursor routing button. Somebody cued me into that on the email list. Yes, that's that's a great way to do it. Yeah, they work quite well. Um, I wish I could move like by a couple seconds, maybe instead of, you know what I'm saying? Instead of, because when you use those, it moves you by like 20 or 30 seconds. It'd be nice to be able to, like you heard, you missed the last couple sentences. Um, it'd be nice to be able to jump back by, you know, smaller increments, perhaps. I'm just suggesting things because sure. I know this is new. So um, thank you so much. I know you have probably have a lot of hands, so I'm going to, uh, but I appreciate it. And I will, um, I will remember what you said about so now I know how to get to the web radio. I'll, I'll, I'll figure that one out. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. So uh, as mentioned, uh, we are coming up towards the end of our time. We do have 12 minutes left and we have, let's see, one, two, three, four hands up and a couple chats in here. So let's go ahead and get through some of these chats real quick. Uh, does the podcast app support chapters? Um, I don't believe that it does. Um, uh, that would be my guess. Earl, do you know if it supports chapters? I've, I've never heard that uh, term applied to the podcast app <laughs> before. So I, and I didn't see it while I was tooling around yeah. with the, uh, the help documentation. Sure. Uh, Kayla writes that uh, she loves the new web radio database, uh, has favorite subsonic radio station. Thank you very much. Uh, loves the new bug fixes with the streaming metadata. That's good. I know a lot of people are asking about that. Um, so besides just new applications. This firmware release has a lot of bug fixes as well. Um, there was a lot of effort that went into this one. So thank you very much. Um, Caroline writes that for surely you can turn the voice off completely in the document reader. You can set things up. So pressing space Z to close a book reader will automatically set a bookmark and return you to that place when you open it up. Thank you very much. Uh, Chad Brown is requesting that you sing and I request that we hold that till later. <laughs> No, nah, Earl's a great singer. We're just a little bit uh, pressed for time. Um, all right. So we've got, uh, let's see, five hands up right now. So we have 10 minutes left, five hands up. That's two minutes per hand. Let's try to keep it short. Carrie's iPhone. Carrie's iPhone, go ahead and unmute and ask your question. That'd be star six. Sorry, I've just um, okay. shut voiceover up there. This is Kerry from New Zealand. Hey, thanks hey. for joining us. Thank you. Um, oh, first of all, with the recordings of these, can we get those using the podcast app? The recording of this webinar? Yeah. No, uh, this is going to be published on YouTube, um, but the new SenseCast uh, podcast uh, does cover much of the same information. So okay. if you, yeah, if you go to the SenseCast app, it's going to be a different presentation, but a lot of the same information. Oh, very good. Thank you. Um, also, I'm just wondering, I saw in the manual where it said you can press enter J if you're on a website, if you wanted to get the list of podcasts. And I tried that, but it didn't seem to work. I'm just, I must be missing something there. I don't think I've actually used that one, Earl. Hmm. When you're in the app, when you're in the uh, podcast app, or when you're I thought it meant I thought it meant when you're in the web browser, but um, yeah, I'm not uh, sure how that works. <laughs> I think you got me at a disadvantage. I'm not sure what. Uh, enter J is that that's the jump to bookmark. 
um, in like the in the Bible app and in the in the in the um, document reader, but I don't know how that applies to the podcast. Okay, well, it was saying about if you're on a website, you can find the list of podcasts by pressing into J, but I don't know whether you had to go back to the podcast app to do that, or I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> we'll have to uh, look into that one for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I love that podcast app. I haven't finished learning it yet, but I'm really enjoying it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely correct. It does, in fact, say subscribe from browsers, enter J. I have not tried that before. Interesting. All right, uh, up next, uh, let's go ahead and go to, hold on just a second. All right, we have a caller, uh, 2797. 2797, go ahead and unmute yourself. And ask your question. And while we're waiting for caller 2797, uh, we've got, uh, there we go. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Yes, this is, this is Deborah Prost, and I really want the Bible app, and I just tried to get it through the Google search, and I got a bunch of weird stuff. Okay, so. So does that mean, I got it, it says since Bible app dot B I N sign, I enter, it says open with dialogue, and it has Android or notepad. I'd rather have just the plain files. I mean, how do, what is this that I've got? It, do I just need to email you guys and get the link? So you know, I think that's going to be the most direct thing to do is because they, they've got it all documented. To, you know, send you a, a link where you can go to the page where you have to download all three of those uh, files, you know, the, the uh, um, contents, the data, and the uh, documents. Uh, you know, that yeah, that's what I thought. I thought I'd get that one. I don't know what I've gotten. It's, sure. I tried to open it and no, notepad. It just came out like a bunch of garbage. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what you want to do when you download those uh, those files, if you don't, uh, I highly recommend that before you download and install the the Bible app, that you uh, download and read through the user manual. Um, yeah. Because what what happens is when you download from the Braille Sense Six. It will download as a .bin file sometimes. That's right. You want to change that file? Yeah, extension. that's what it is. That's what I've got. Oh, what is you want to that? change that to .zip, change it to a .zip, and then oh, continue. Oh, Lord, from see, there. I'm not tech, I'm technologically challenged. How do you even change this thing? So, so I recommend I mean, that you, you reach out to tech, HIMSS tech support to address that. We have six minutes left on this webinar. We have four oh, okay, hands Okay, so up. Do, I just, do I just delete this and get a link from you guys? No. No, don't delete it. You've already got it. Uh, you just need to rename it. Uh, you, you can browse to it within the web, uh, within the uh, file manager. And if you press, if you you press enter R on it, that'll get you into the rename field where you can actually rename it. Just where it says BIN, just change it to ZIP and press enter. Okay. And that'll, that'll rename it. And then I need to call tech support how to how to unpack it or whatever. Yeah, just read the, after you do the, the naming, the renaming, then read your documentation. You may be able to just get through it without having to call. Yeah, the, I the, think I'll have to call. <laughs> so backspace R. Enter R. Enter R, okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, we've got five minutes left, four hands up. We're going to make this as fast as possible. Uh, Jean, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. And after Jean is up, we're going to go to Dimitri. Dimitri, you're up next after Jean. Jean, go ahead and unmute yourself. All right, moving on to Dimitri. Dimitri, you should be able to unmute yourself. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, can you hear me, guys? Yes. Uh, hi, how are you? Um, so uh, I kind of missed the uh, the whole Wiktionary thing. I, I was able to find it. So Wikipedia lies in my all apps and Wiktionary is in web tools. And how do you, uh, there's a global key command to kind of set one as default or something? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so how, how do you do it again? 
Um, so yeah, you're going to find that in the global options dialog box to change what your uh, default uh, search option is. Oh, okay. So you press space with the letter O and then mm -hmm. uh, the default web search shortcut key is or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, shortcut key is W. So press space with the letter O to open global options. Press W until you get to default web search. Mm -hmm. Press space to change the option and then enter to save. But then whenever I want to use it, it's like backspace W or whatever? Or uh, it's, just... it's, it's Alt, Control, Alt, W. Control, Alt, W. Mm -hmm. And also, so uh, I was looking for the manual of the, yes, um, the new upgrade. Uh, but if I Google it, it gives me the old uh, manual. Uh, is there a quick way to get the um, newest yeah. Uh, manual? Yeah, just go to our website, hymns-inc.com, and in the search field, just type in uh, RailSense 6. It'll it'll come up uh, You know, in, in the download center also. You can just go to the download center uh, on the HIMSS website and find it there too. From Chris to okay, everyone. I, I, I thought that I did it, but like, hey, you, you give me the old version. All right, thank you guys. Okay, thank you. you're welcome. Bye bye. Okay, I tried. I tried to um, see if I could read, uh, get connected my Braille display to the computer, and I got it onto the USB port too. But when I pressed enter on the terminal for screen reader, when I press enter on, it doesn't do anything. I'm using NVDA. Is there something that I'm not doing? Oh, this yeah, is going to be. This is yeah. going to be a tech support issue. Um, okay. there, it, it, it could be something really simple, but it also could be that uh, there's a setting that needs to be addressed on your computer. Okay. So yeah, I would address that directly with tech support. All right. Uh, up next, we have Terry. Terry, go ahead and unmute yourself. So we have Terry and then Amal, and those are the last two that were taken. Oh, Terry, go ahead and unmute. All right, while we're waiting for Terry, Amal, do you want to go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question? Uh, hello, hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Fine, thank you. Please, I'd like... I'd like to ask about the uh, sense dictionary. It asks me about a keyword, uh, but you said it, it will. We are allowed to use it. Um, it will be. Uh, it will be on uh, the Braille Sense Six. Yeah. Do you have the Braille Sense Six, or do you have a different device? Yeah. I, yes, I do have the Braille Sense Six. Okay, so it should be included inside of the the device uh, by default already. Uh, uh, Ma, are you running the an, uh, English version of the firmware on your Braille Sense 6? No, I'm re yeah. running the Arabic I, firmware. Yeah, you're going to want to contact our technical support. We, we can't help you. You're running the Arabic version, right? Yeah, could you help me? If I if I contact you tomorrow, uh, yeah. could you help me? Uh, yeah, it, it, support guys will be able to help you to, uh, tomorrow. Uh, okay. Not our, not our, uh, are you in the U.S. or are you in? Uh, yeah, in I am in the U.S. I am in the U.S. I am in Dallas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Reach out to him's tech support and they will try to address that with you. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And please, I'd like to ask about the document reader. Uh, if I, uh, how can I choose a file to read in the document reader? Well, I don't know about the Arabic uh, firmware, uh, uh, but uh, in the English version, if you can browse to a file in the file manager and you press uh, backspace R, it, it it launches it in the document reader. Uh, no, I, I uh, use the English interface, not the Arabic interface. Okay. I didn't put, I don't put the files in, uh, in uh, I mean, uh, uh, not um, uh, translated in Arabic. No, I uh, use the English trans, uh, the English oh. uh, interface. You're, you're using the the English firmware. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, just browse to it in your file manager and press uh, backspace R. Yes. Uh, and and then if you press space H, it will actually bring up the context sensitive help to show you how to use you know all the the different features. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I love the the podcast. It's very good. It's very awesome. interesting. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, giving me this chance. Thank you. Thank you. Well, is it a wrap? Uh, we got one more. We got Terry Gorman. Terry, if you're with I'm, us. I know Terry Gorman. Oh. <laughs> Terry, while we're waiting, uh, let's give you one more minute. Uh, anything left in the chat? Heads up, if you can't use the cable, it comes with BS6 for charging the USB port on your PC. It needs a different size port. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's just a, the, the one that comes with the Braille Sense 6 is a USB type A to a USB type C, and it's completely standard. So there should be absolutely no difference. Well, OK, uh, let me let me just clarify that, because uh, I just got a newer one. And what it comes with is the USB-C on both ends the cable oh yes 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 yeah so you need a type a to type c mm -hmm. yes yeah c to c, yeah c to c um if your computer has a type c then yeah it'll work but you will need it for a regular type a yeah and you can you can pick those up anywhere you know target or <laughs> best buy now, amazon is my go-to for that type of thing all right i think that's it Oh, Terry, sorry we didn't get to talk to you. You know, if you if you press the space bar on your Mac, if you're using a Mac or a Windows computer, it serves as kind of a talk button on a on a walkie-talkie. Yep. Otherwise, we, we lost Terry. Terry Terry left oh, us. Okay, so. Bye, Terry. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, bye, Terry, and uh, bye to everybody else. Uh, thank you, everybody else, for joining us. It was uh, our pleasure. We hope that you found this information valuable. Uh, check back early next week on the YouTube channel for a recording of this webinar. And with that, I'm Thomas, joined here by Earl here at HIMSS. Thank you guys very much. Yeah. And I hope you all have a great uh, Thursday weekend, whatever's coming up. So thank you, everyone. Good night. Bye.